Well, hey, everybody, it's time for another episode of Gadget Talk, the monthly creative cache show brought to you by the Geocache Talk Geocaching Network. If you're watching live, you can be part of the adventure tonight. Please join us in the chat room, participate with others as they watch the show. The link to the chat room is on the geocachetalk.com front page. If you're listening later, please give it a like and subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, even Twitch. And now here's your Geocache Talk host, Chad Champion, oh, a.k.a. Bounce Bounce. Good good, good, good evening, Chad. <laughs> good evening, Gary. Chad Champion. Um, All right. And our sponsor for Gadget Talk is, of course, Logwork. Logwork, the creators of the fantastic logbook, because you can fan it out. See see what I did there or what they did? Thanks. Made with genuine write in the rain paper. We're going to mention write in the rain again one more time here in a few minutes. The logbook designed for the micro containers of the present and future. Actually, you can put them in any kind of container. Geared toward the hider who would rather go caching than doing geocache maintenance. Find them at logwork. It's L O G W E R K dot com. All right. Back to you, Chad. All right. Great. Well, hopefully everybody's having a good time staying at home, um, avoiding this virus, everybody or that's out there. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I know I've been home most of last week and this week, and I'm going crazy. You could build like a thousand gadget talk ca yeah. gadget caches right now. Yeah. Oh. Um, I'm, working, I'm working on a few. <laughs> working on a few. Yeah. Um, before we get started, I do want to mention one other item, and then we'll jump right into the build. Um, tonight is the last night to uh, purchase with the 30% off with Ride in the Rain. Um, oh, there we go. Thank you. Appreciate it. The promo code when you buy with Ride in the Rain, the coupon code is Geocache. G E O C A C H E. And that's uh, ends tonight. So make sure and get out and get an order put in with Ride in the Rain, R I T R dot com. And uh, we've been very excited to have them around. Um, they have incredible products. Um, and um, Chad actually got to go visit with them, which is kind of cool. It was real fun. I, I went down there and met with them and got to tour the factory and, and see how they actually make the paper waterproof it. And, and, uh, they're cutting up the, the books and, and binding them and everything. It was really cool experience. Right. Um, yeah. You know, in the front of their lobby, they have, uh, one that actually has water that runs on it, mm. um, all the time. And, and I didn't realize it even worked underwater. So you actually could ride on it underwater. So it's actually <laughs> really cool. So That's I was cool. impressed. So when we build that, that, gadget cache underwater we can use right in the rain paper then you could make a diving cache and i don't know if it'd work good in salt water but if it would last the paper but i don't well, know bottom of the lake somewhere yeah yeah <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool that, that is cool and um we won't spoil everything but we are in discussion with them about maybe putting a, a geocache at their location so stay tuned for that we'll get you guys more details about uh, the possibilities of that. We're really excited about working with working more with Ride in the Rain, and uh, since they have incredible products, they really do. So, um, all right. Well, what are we building tonight? So tonight we're going to build the um, complete the circuit uh, decryptor for a code. Um, and what we're going to do on this one is we're going to build it right on top of an ammo can, just like we did last week. Okay. Um, you can do it many different ways just just like uh you know the led decryptor um but uh yeah we're just doing it on the ammo can because that's usually the easiest way for us to do it okay cool um so what we're going to start with here is um get the ammo can i guess is, is the first thing right. so one of the first things you have to figure uh think about doing is um what uh how many of the screws you want now i think in in the description i i put 14 of the the screws in there okay. uh, and that would have seven and seven for your code you could do as many or as little as you want it, it's just up to you um i was trying to make it easy enough and then so it didn't look too crowded um mm -hmm. what i what i ended up coming with for my sample 
looks like this here. Oh, so, okay, cool. um, and then I just use the label pr uh, printer here, a label maker to to label it. And so you could actually do it and do it like this. And then uh, if you made the labels first, you could actually use that spacing to make your screw holes. And oh, unfortunately, right. I did it the backwards, right? I made the screw holes and <laughs> I had to figure out the labeling afterwards, but not too bad. So cool. uh, we're going to go and do the, the 14 just like this. Okay, cool. Hey, while, while we're doing, while you're kind of getting mm -hmm. yourself set up there, you got some sweet machine behind you. For our audio listeners, he's got some kind of incredible contraption. I don't know what that is, but he'll tell us more later, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I can show you later. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> when we're doing the builder now, it doesn't really matter. That's um, pretty pretty sweet. Um, actually, we could do it real quick now. We'll do it now? Okay. Yeah. Um, so all, what this is, is um, I was just messing around. I had a bunch of spare parts. Mm -hmm. um, all these things I have, I have a big area just full of random things that I've made. So I okay. just threw it threw a couple parts together to make this. So this is, and it's not all the way done. You know, I put it together and then what do I need? You know, how do I make it different? I need to have another step to actually get to a log book or something, or to get a code word if we want to make it a lab cache or whatever. Right. But I pretty much just put these together for me for fun. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, I, I've been home and I'm bored. So are you anyway, working too with uh, uh, Goblin Dust a little bit? Yeah, so um, Goblin Dust uh, and Team Noltex, uh, we're doing. Uh, we're on the committee to do some of the labs for the 2020. Oh, cool! And then we do labs for a lot of other events, right? And so um, we're always looking at new things. And so this was an idea uh, we came up with, or I was thinking about doing for an event. And uh, so I, this, he thinks it's a lie detector. I don't know if that's true or not, but <laughs> no, that would be a fun one. I could see Goblin Dust making that. He's really good at making things like that, right? Um, but that's a good idea. I have to bring that up to him. And he's really <laughs> Goblin Dust is so good at finding these random parts. If you needed a lie detector, he'd probably find one somewhere, right? And, re <laughs> and awesome. make it so it could be a cast. Actually, he's okay. such a good builder. So, anyways, right. what this oh, is yeah. is is um like a nuclear control room type of thing is what I kind of made it. I, I don't know what it is. So you have to figure out the puzzle to get into the key. Right. And um, let me just take out my headphones real quick. Okay, go ahead. Um, I can hear you. So yep. um, the code is, you have to get the code to get to the key. And once you get to the key, you have to arm it, which will then set off the alarm. And then this will light up and you push that, which will open up another door to get to the cache. Or to you know uh, a, a code word for an adventure lab or whatever. So okay. Cool. Um, so anyways, let's we'll open up this door. I say that thinking that I know what I'm doing. There we go. Oh, there it open goes. The door. Grab the key. Now, oh, <laughs> I have to turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> Got to turn it on. That's okay. Yeah. So when it's when it's on, we'll hear it here when it boots up. It yeah, actually makes uh, computer noises. I don't know if you can hear that. Uh, so it's like it's Houston, running all the time. Houston, Texas, Dave oh, says, do not push a red. There's no red button, Dave. It's a, it's a white button. It's a white button. I don't know if I have a red one in stock. So I just there use the go. white one. Um, so anyways, we'll arm it. Like, oh, and then oh, we'll alarm. <laughs> and we'll alarm four times, and then the light will keep going. Uh, and then you push the button to open up something, but I haven't gotten that far yet. Right. So anyways, we'll unarm it and it will shut off in a second. That's awesome. And that's it. Pretty simple. Nothing really that big of a deal, <laughs> but nice board. So it's something fun to make. Oh yeah, absolutely. So it's very war games. If I'm, I'm, I'm dating myself. I, I remember when war games came out and that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um someone mentioned to me, and I don't remember now a war games one, sure. but I don't I don't remember what he was talking about doing, but I thought it was actually kind of fun. Right. I assume okay. you've seen the movie. Yeah, yeah, I've seen the oh, movie. Yeah. Okay, so um anyways, back to the, the building. But yeah, that's yeah. that's fun just being creative, figuring out something to do and throwing a bunch of old stuff together. <laughs> that's very um neat. to try and make something new. Mm-hmm. 
So what I'm going to do here is, again, I use tape on my cans here so I can actually write on them to to put the marks to put the to drill the holes okay without actually marking up the container itself okay let me move this mic out of the way here a bit just uh duct tape or oh that's painters oh, tape? painters tape painters you can tape, use blue yeah. or, or green or whatever you have it's not a big deal masking that doesn't really matter Painter tape's good because it comes off so easily yeah and the green comes off really easy it, it hardly leaves any it hardly sticks at all so cool um so now I'm going to grab my ruler and my pen. Now I'm going to use a, you can use a regular pen um, on this tape. I'm going to go with the Sharpie. So we, we need two lines here. And so one thing that I do on these is make sure when, I'm not, when you open it up, you actually oh. have the room, right? Oh yeah, exactly. Put it so. Um, I'm going to go, I know I have room here between these two, so I'm going to keep actually all the screws between this, these two spots here. Oh, right. I got you between the handle, basically just because exactly. you know. Yeah, exactly. Because I know that that area is open. Gotcha. Um, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and go off here three quarters of an inch for my first line. And so what I'm going to do is just make some lines here mm -hmm. for my just mark my screw holes right and so i'm going off three quarters of an inch from the edge of this okay gotcha and then i'm going to flip it and do the same thing on this side because tonight you're planning to build one with eight or how many uh, it's going to have 14 screws in all Okay, seven, seven on each side. Yeah. Okay, seven on each. Okay, got it. That's so. Then once we have our marks, we're going to go ahead and just connect them, and I'll just make a line here. April April's going to build it tomorrow, but she wants to she wants to watch tonight. Oh, great. Well, make sure she posts. A picture of her build. Absolutely. Um, so now, you know what I'm going to cheat here. Quick and figure out how far apart I went. Yeah. Five eighths. <laughs> Is that right? Oh, it looks like half inch. Okay. I do a lot of stuff in millimeters, so I think a lot of people don't. So I have to get it converted over to get used to using inches millimeters so because it's a little easier typically on a ruler it's easier even though it's harder to read it's a lot it's more accurate um, it is, right and on my cnc machines and everything uses millimeters right so i've gotten used to going off of that cool uh, um yeah met a lot of things are metric uh yeah Okay, so I know. So what we're going to do now is find center. So okay. three, this is three and three quarter. Um, Slide a little you, forward if you would. Oh, yeah, thanks. A little bit. Yes. You're fine. Um, see, in millimeters, it'd be a lot easier to divide because you just put it in half. But uh, so, so three and three quarters, so it'd be one half, five eighths. Is that right? One and five eighths makes three and three quarter. <laughs> Adi, so un-American. <laughs> Shut up, Adi. No, I'm kidding. You know what? I'm gonna cheat. I know that's not right. It might be one and seven, one and seven eighths. I think it is. Hey, Adi. You know we love you, and we're hoping everybody's good. And uh, wife is doing well. She's expecting and inch and seven eighths. Okay, cool is is half of that so um and then uh so that's center and now we're going to go a half inch off of that to do so we're going to do seven right so we'll have one yep. in the center and then three on each side right so i'm going to split it out and you can do your own math if you want to add more or less screw holes is up to you um, but i'm just going to go every half inch and make my mark 
and you're doing 14 because you want to give uh, more randomization without spoiling the your build tonight. You're wanting it to be a lot of a lot of a lot of um, options. Yeah, I don't want them to be able to figure it out real fast. I mean, if you only right. had six screws there, they go through it pretty quick, and you're going to see when it's done how easy it is, anyways. Well, uh, still though, figure it out. 14 is pretty good though. Yeah, I have one out here actually in the wild still that has 50 something. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, it takes some time to figure it out. Because you're but, a bit right, because we're looking at. It depends on how long the experience you want to create for the cashier when they're finding it. Um, if you want them there for a while, then you could do it longer. Some places, you know, if it's by a business or in a park, you know, they may not want to have people standing in a bush trying to figure this out for an hour. So, oh, okay. that's, so you can make it easier or harder. It's completely up to you. Okay. So here is my marks. So I have my seven marks here for it. And so we're going to take our drill bit, which should be the same as we used last week. Um, so it should be the the three sixteenths drill bit. Yep. Just make sure that's the one I have here. Oh, and Heather's watching too. Hi, Heather. Happy to see her along as well. So I got to meet them last year in Colby. We were doing some Mingo planning. Oh, nice. And, uh, so that was fun. Okay, and I'm gonna pull this away a little bit because my drill's long. Yeah, you're you're fine. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and screw the drill these out. Go back to here for a moment. Okay. Now, um, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say... Um, the Quebec tribe has mentioned about um, planning out exactly what they want to do because you you couldn't theory do this in something other than an ammo can. Yeah, you can do this in many different things. You can do it for a multi cache as a, a waypoint, uh, which I can show you. I made one up here to show you. Yeah, um, here at the end, um, I've done these. I don't know if you can hear me over that drill. I've done these uh, several times in um, old electrical panels. So when you open up the panel, you'll see oh, okay. the top half of it will be these screws. Right. And there'll be a lockbox down below for the code. Right. Yeah, because keep, keep going. I'm just saying that, yeah, the nice thing about the uh, ammo can is it's sort of a standard, uh, in many ways, a standard cash container. So it's kind of cool. And that's why we're using the ammo can because we're, a lot of a lot more cashers think hide ammo cans or stuff out in the woods behind right. bushes than on buildings, and so um, we're just trying to make it pretty easy and and do what most people will do. Right. And you can adjust it all you want. Yeah. <laughs> Try Cassius is multitasking. He's like, he's uh, he's he's watching this and building at the same time. So, <laughs> <laughs> me too. Exactly. Um, so now that we have our holes drilled out, and actually we can give a sec here for people to get caught up if we need to. Um, but uh, once we have all the holes drilled out, the way you're going to have to, what's going to happen to know if you have the correct code is obviously an LED. Right. Um, so we're going to find a place for the one LED we want to have in here. Right. And I believe what I did on this was I actually just went right up above here. Oh, gotcha. Because you want to go probably too far away. Right. So if we pull this tape back, because we don't need it anymore, um, you can actually see on these plastic ammo cans the molding line. Uh -huh. And so I know exactly where I can go without and have it in that same compartment as those screws. Oh, right, right. Yeah, because you don't want to go over it because you have to, then you have to 
Mm -hmm. You have to run the wire over and stuff yeah. like that. So, um, so we're just going to go ahead and put an extra hole there. And that will be for the LED. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, that's interesting. Uh, uh, Derek mentioned he did some and his son did some. So that's kind of a, a nice, this is kind of a good, again, another thing, as long as you're careful, obviously, with your, that you can have your kids build with you too. So, yes. Yep. I wish my son was into building these with me, but. Oh, well. <laughs> He builds lots of other stuff. No neat. Um, okay, so now that we have all of our, our holes here, let's go ahead and put the screws in. And so what I did was I put on there seven, but you know, obviously what I recommend actually, if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, you can get a hundred pack of these machine screws and nuts. Mm -hmm. fairly, fairly inexpensive and then you have them for a lot of things i use these all the time so i always buy the big packs but right. um it's it's completely up to you um if you wanted to which i i didn't have in here i didn't put in here but if you made these holes here uh, a tiny bit smaller just a size smaller so maybe a seven thirty seconds you could actually just screw these put through the, put the screws through them and not may need use a nut but okay. um, I didn't want to make it hard for anybody, so we're just going to go ahead and it's fine. use these screws. And uh, Ryan's building that too. Ryan, um, don't cut off a, an arm or anything, and if you need to, <laughs> let us know when we call 911 for you tonight. If you cut off an arm with what the tools we're using tonight are, then... Um, but it's Ryan. You're doing something wrong. Let's remember. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. I'm just messing with him. So we're just going to stick these screws through here and get them all tightened down. And you'll know as, as you're going through and you're building this, you know, you'll think of different ways that you would do it or want to do it or, you know, there's all kinds of different things that different ways to make it. So this is just an example of one way um, that I find is the easiest way to make it. And then mm -hmm. you can take it from there anywhere you want to go so you could make it a little bit wacky i can't believe i'm using the word wacky tonight but <laughs> yeah you could put the holes like in random locations all all over the or could you put them all over the ammo can in different locations so it's harder to track in your head which one i just did yes okay yeah, you could do that you can do multiple if you wanted to do so you could do two led colored lights too um, or, or as many as you want, and you gotta you gotta connect a couple different numbers, and then you can you know add them or or uh, multiply them for the code, and then oh, minus yeah. the color. I mean, you can do whatever you want on it. Sure. Um, I think the one that I have is you have to find the two numbers and multiply them. Okay. Um, and then minus, and then I think it says then take off a certain amount, um, and that gives you the code. And a lot of people on that get the two numbers and they add them together, but they don't multiply them. So they, sure. I get that call that, oh, oh yeah, oh it's yeah, not we'll working. <laughs> and then all, and then you know, same with the decrypting. Sometimes it'll be just decrypt it from in numerical order, low to high, right? And I'll get that call that says that they can't figure it out. And well, did you read the full cache description? It's in numerical order, low to high. It's like, oh, we didn't get to that far. April made a, on the made a nice comment. She said that um the same thing you you bought at home depot being used glad i got the right supplies so i guess is that something going forward to uh chad when we when possible or is that like you're going to be your you think you're going to be your default to try to use home depot or i guess lowe's too but try to go with one and then if we have to we could uh Nuts and bolts um, I, is typically Home Depot Lowe's, Ace Hardware or something like that. Um, Amazon doesn't carry too many of the nuts and bolts. I had tried to find them on there. Right. Um, so yeah, I would say for those. But as far as electronics goes, you'll you'll find those. Those have to be something on Amazon or your local electronics store. Yeah. And I guess what we'll do is when we going forward too, if there's something that ends up being on the build list or the tools list, we try to 
either one of two things. Either we're going to um, put a link or we'll mention where you can buy it. That, that kind of thing. A lot of times we'll put a link. But. Yeah. I think we link Amazon on this one for some of the parts. I th- right. I remember I, I believe we did. And I'll have to be better at getting those lists out and where exactly to buy them. Right. Um, I think obviously if we do Home Depot, I think most people have Home Depot. Yeah. I could actually just put the part number down um, or their, their stock number. So then it would right be easier to find. If you don't even know what you're talking about, you could go in and ask for a stock number and it should be the same. Yeah. I noticed that ours, if you mention something like that, a lot of them are carrying little handhelds now and they can look it up real quick and tell you. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a good point. We'll have to make sure I'm better at adding those to the list. So yeah. I know I had uh, Seebeck tried contacted me, who's on tonight mm-hmm. here on the chat. I saw her um, right. a couple days ago. She was at Ace Hardware, I believe it was, and she was asking about the screws. Right. There, so that's cool. And I put, I think I put on there just some nuts and bolts, I think, or yeah. screws and bolts, and there actually should be a machine. Because uh, <clears throat> otherwise, it will just be a screw and not have any buffer or nut. Yeah, yeah. Houston, Texas, Day mentioned investing a good drill bit, a good drill and a bits. That's something we might want to put to at one point, not now uh, or this week, but sometime, uh, Chad. What we want to do is maybe go through and think of think of all the things that maybe are standard. I want to say are you, that you would normally use, just so if people don't have anything, they can you know go find some ba- basic tools that they want to use if they don't have them. Yeah. And I actually went to um, like Harbor Freight. So if you're beginning and, and you don't have a lot of money to spend on, on stuff um, for this, because it's in plastic, I actually end up buying this drill bit set at, at Harbor Freight and it was like $4 and 90 cents or something. Right. Um, it will work okay for plastic, but once you're getting into some metals, it's, they're going to have some issues um, because they are just a cheap drill bit. But, um, yeah, I mean, I can go in there and put what I prefer. Yeah. Uh, on well, there. yeah, I agree. Uh, and April mentioned that you can, on the Home Depot app, uh, you can tell, the, tell them which aisle and the bay number. And they'll, uh, I think she said also you can um, order online for pickup at, at the place. That's cool. Oh. So I'm just going to tighten down my screws now. You don't have to do that quite yet um, because we actually need to add some wire to these. Oh, okay. Um, to jump the two, jump the two screws. Um, if you happen to buy a big kit of the the nuts um, that go with the screws, you can actually just add an extra nut in, to the screws itself. So then you don't have to loosen it up. Oh, okay. To put it on. Cool. Okay. So there's the 14 screws there. And so these are gonna what we're gonna use actually to, to get the numbers. <clears throat> and you can use whatever you want. Like I, I use the label maker to write the numbers and you can randomize them, or you can use a sharpie and write on there. It's okay. completely up to you uh, what you want to do. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and put the LED in. Ah, uh, yes. So Oh, yeah, caching did have a good 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 item there, Chad, about if you apply too much pressure to the plastic, you could crack it. So Yeah, that's why like last time I mentioned, you know, let the pressure of the drill don't, you know, the weight of the drill work itself uh to go through it rather than pushing too hard, but yeah, that's a great point. I should yeah. mention that. That's good. That's that's something I would definitely do probably even on a live build. <laughs> right. So oh, I'm doing this off camera. Sorry. Um, so what I did was I grabbed my LED, which is if you bought a pack of LEDs last week uh, for that builder. I'm oh, sorry, last month. Right. You should have enough left over to to use one of them. Um, and so you can use any color you want because all this is doing is saying, yes, you completed the circuit. That's, those are the correct numbers that you want to use. Right. 
so you, maybe clear might be a good one because you might use the colored for other ones because don't they usually come in a pack when you buy a pack that doesn't have at least one that's clear or yeah so depending on what pack you bought i don't remember if i buy bigger packs so yeah there's like a, a bright white and then a, a light white or a, okay. a soft white and then all the different colors it is completely up to you what you want to use but yeah i i use clear because it shows up really easy yeah and uh, you know like i was saying if you if you like to use the colors for another project then use up your use up your 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 ones that you don't really maybe not going to use as often because you can kind of keep the colored for another another time yeah so um but yeah, that's that's up to you. Some people say use red because when you're you, in an LED, the different colors use more power. Oh, and, and mm. so like red is usually used on a lot of things because red takes the least amount of power for it to light up. So if your battery is getting really low, right, um, the red will still work. Like blue needs a lot more juice mm. for it to work. So if you're doing the multiple colors, like on the one we did last month, right, um, if the battery is really really low, it won't show all the colors so sure but, it, but it's up to you. this one's yeah. going to need an internal battery oh that's right see yeah we got an internal battery see yeah i gotta remember that it's not yeah so you could do an external battery but you have to figure out a way to have them hold it on there and then also complete the circuit at the same time yeah so if you can figure that out then great it's up to you <laughs> but a nine volt battery on something like this you're only using the power when they're actually completing the circuit right um and so that battery should last a long time. I think I have one out that's been out for a couple of years and it's still working. Yeah. Um, so the only thing is if you get moisture in there and stuff, it could, it could corrode part of the battery or, you know, the connectors or whatever, sure. but um, you'd have to check on your cache once in a while and see. Yeah. So, that kind of lend, that kind of leads, I think to a, a preview in two weeks. Uh, we're going to be doing another gadget talk show a little different. We're going to be doing a, uh, more of a discussion uh, and we're going to be talking about internal power. Is that correct? Chad? Yeah. So in two weeks, we're going to have a uh, DJW house on uh, with us and we're going to talk about internally powered caches Yeah. and uh, what we use on our caches to power. And we'll talk about batteries, different types of batteries, um, you know, the conditions to have them in, you know, about them discharging in different temperatures, all that. So pretty much everything you should know about, powering caches so it'll be yeah. a good episode yeah that'll be fun so two weeks um we will be doing another gadget talk uh next tuesday uh with geocache talk so um there you go and then um now when i put the the led in it's a little tight for the led which is the way i like it so i push it in um with either a pen or or something to get it in there and it's nice and tight, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some uh, hot glue around it here just to make sure it stays in place. Okay. I've had, I've had way too many cashers push on them and pop them out. Oh and, yeah. And, and honestly that hot glue is not going to hold it that much, but you know, just like the one we did um, last month, you could just fill this section here with silicone and seal it up, but you got to make sure you leave the part for the battery uh, right. open. But you really don't have to on this unless you're really worried about um, water getting in, which I would recommend siliconing around your nuts and bolts okay. on this um, just to make sure nothing gets in. Right. Oh, that's good. So, and I, I would recommend the silicone over the hot glue um, just because it, it expands and attracts a lot more with different materials. So, um, a hot glue doesn't really expand and contract too much. So the seal wouldn't stay as long. Right. Yeah. Uh, electric water boy was saying that <laughs> funny electric water boy. We're talking about this. <laughs> um, talking about putting maybe a battery holder of some kind. Maybe. I don't know. There's a, there's ways you could probably. You could, I, I could show you a couple battery holders. Um, I just, on this one here, I just did a basic nine volt battery um, here and then, either hot glue it in a place or do double-sided tape. Sure. Um, but there are some um, water watertight external battery holders you can do or, or just a generic 9-volt battery holder you can do. You can do, you know, four double A's on this if you want. 
Sure. Uh, that's up to you, but I just wanted to make this generic and easy for everybody to, yeah. to get. So, um, that's but yeah, the, you can do anything like that you want. Yeah. That's the way we want to start, you know, and it does give people some ideas and, and as time goes on, April's mentioned about buying a glue, a hot glue gun. That's, it's always a good thing to, uh, to have for this kind of, uh, these kind of projects. Um, you can seal them different ways, but I think that tends to work pretty well. Yeah. So what we're going to go ahead and do now, now what we need to do is we have the nine volt battery. We need to split up the circuit for it, right? So one will be to the battery and one will be obviously to the screws. Right. Um, and so uh, what we'll do is go ahead and get our, now if everybody remembers how to find their, their positive and negative on their uh, LED with the resistor there, will be on the negative side. Um, so we'll go ahead and put these together. And, and on this one, I, I think last time I actually said a couple uh, 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 wire nuts. Mm -hmm. uh, and we end up not using them, but you do need them for this one. So, okay. hey, there you go. And if you went online and you looked up, you know, circuits and stuff, you could go all different ways with this. Um, you know, this is just kind of a basic, easy way to start and learn. Um, and then you can just, you know, go any direction you want to go. Right. So we're going to go ahead and, and I went ahead and stripped that. So we're going to go ahead and make that connection. Let's see. Yeah, uh, that is true. Uh, Jesse's, uh, he's here. Jesse's in the, uh, he's running the, he's running the chat room tonight, but he did mention that he went out and, and you do have to make sure you buy the right size glue sticks based on yeah. your glue gun. <laughs> Cause there are different types. Yes. Mm -mm. I have, a, we have two different ones here and we are always running out of one size that my son uses all the time. And it happens to be the same size I use. Right. Oh, that, hey, that works out. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put our connector here on here. Yep. And uh, go ahead and crimp it on just like just like uh, we did last month. Yep. Cool. Yeah, we showed that off, long, uh, right, yeah. off there, but uh, yeah, any kind of wire stripper. He's got a really cool wire stripper, but you can you can get any type of. Yeah, any kind will work. There's so many different ones, and we did. We do have a list on the uh, website of of ones that I recommend using. But yeah, you know, just your these these blue ones here are just your cheap Home Depot ones that mm -hmm. I think you can buy. And in fact, Harbor Freight had these, and I think it was these strippers with actually some of the connectors were like five ninety nine. And honestly, for doing little things like this, that stuff that works just fine. Right. But, when you're doing big projects and you're doing a lot of wire stripping, then it kind of gets to be kind of gets to be old using those strippers. Yeah. Um, I, I've had to, I've in a pinch, you can use a knife <laughs> like I did one time when I was out doing, I was actually out uh, when I was back in my IT days and I had to fix it. And it's like, I had nothing else. It's like pocket knife will work if I have to, I made it work. So, but not the best way to go. Better to have an actual pair of wire strippers makes things a lot easier. Yeah. Well, I've used my teeth in once in a while. And, oh, yeah. And and a pinch. Like, yeah. I had a friend who all of his, uh, he was our robotics coach, and that's the way he kind of did them. But that's yeah. not the best way, but no. In a pinch, it works. Yeah. Cashing Dead mentioned about, yeah, Harbor Freight has them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if you're just kind of getting into it, you don't want to spend a lot of money. Harbor Freight has a lot of good tools, they um, do. you know, at a good price that will, that will work. Um, you know, it's uh, just completely up to you. Harbor Freight, I guess Northern Tools is another one. I've never shopped Northern Tool. I've okay. seen their catalogs, but I've never shopped them. Kind of depends on what's around you. I think we have a Northern Tool here, but I've been to a Harbor Freight. I like Harbor Freight because 
surprisingly there's a lot of cool stuff that even isn't related to this that i don't think people know you know is there so yeah now if you don't have these connectors what you could do is actually just strip your wire down further and you could actually strip it further so you don't have all this extra hanging if you wanted to um, and you could wrap it around the nut a few times or around the bolt and then tighten down the nut it would work um i'm just trying to make it a little bit more professional than that oh darren thanks darren he mentions a uh, prince uh, Princess Auto in Canada is another possibility for a place to shop. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is connect the battery now. And again, like last time, I like to test it. So we're going to go ahead and put our two connectors together and make sure our LED lights up. Oh, yeah, it does come on. So we know we have a good connection. Now, now that I, I've gotten this far, I think what I would have done before I put this on is drilled a hole through here and ran the wire through so it's not sticking down through here. Uh, okay. So I think I'm going to have to fix it because that's going to drive me crazy. <laughs> so I'll just take a minute. I think we have time. Oh, yeah. You're fine. Yeah. Um, what's funny, too, is uh, you learn a lot about people as, as you're building because some people are very OCD. Oddy. And uh, <laughs> they're like... He needs to line up his the 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 screws so they match. It's like Adi, come on, dude. <laughs> but hey, whatever you got to do, whatever makes you happy. Yeah, I like that. And there's times where I I get to the end of the night and I'm like, you know what? Let me just stick this on here and it'll be fine. And then the next day I'll look at it and go, no, nah, I got to redo that. That'll drive me nuts. <laughs> Yes, you're right. You're very much, Lori. Uh, check out your Harbor Freight. I, I'm, you know, people have different reactions to Harbor Freight. We've had some in the uh, chat room already about Harbor Freight. I, I, I mean, it, it's, you know, it's no pure one, but I mean, it's, it's got, it's got what you know, it's got, it's got cool, cool products there. Stuff that you don't always find. I guess I I have no problem with it for certain things. I'm yeah. You know, I buy my metal ammo cans there. I buy the plastic ones there. I buy my puzzle box containers there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and some of the, the things, the electrical fittings. I don't know if you're going to find any difference between Harbor Freight and the ones you find at Lowe's. Right. A lot of that stuff's made in China, and they probably all come out of the same factory. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know. So um, now, now I cut a hole, or I drilled a hole through there and ran this down so it's nice and clean and I could cut this. So if you know which ones you want to use, you could actually yeah. cut it and keep the wire really, really close on there. And then same with this part here too, but uh, I won't do that. Let me just grab another one of these. Here. Yeah. yeah uh, Casey, that's a, that is a good way to put it. It's good tools for occasional use. That is, yeah, it, it's a good way to put it. It's a lot of times, like you said, you can find, um, you can find deals and sometimes if you're you're not wanting to spend a lot of money on stuff um you can find sometimes tools that you can't find home depot like um oh a friend of mine had a um oh, what are those wrenches that have um uh, have a gauge on them so you can't so you you don't over torque wrench yeah it was like a torque wrench or things like that uh, just finding our way. Harbor, Harbor Freight is wonderful for, I'm going to mess this up. Nitrile, nit nitrile gloves. If you're working with epoxy or fiberglass cl cloth. Okay. I messed, I'm sure I butchered that, but nitrile, nitrile. I got to look that up. I think it's nitrile gloves. You, you learn something. There a, I think they're a latex, a powder for your latex glove. <laughs> I'm going to look up how to say that because I can, because I'm not, I'm just here for, I'm his Ed McMahon tonight. So <laughs> well, that's dating me as well. Nobody knows. A lot of people are like Ed Mc what? <laughs> Who? So, so this set here of the connectors, I got a uh, Harbor Freight um, a few weeks back and oh, it, cool. I, I think it was like $9 or something. And it's going to have enough connectors for me to last me a couple of years. And I don't know if I am going to go through them all. 
So I think it's a good deal myself. It is. I'm being told it's natural. Natural? Okay. Natural. So, and also, if you don't have the ring terminal, um, you can actually go ahead and use the spade terminal. So, if you don't have the ring, you could use a spade, and it just slides in. It's, it's up to you. So, you don't have to have the ring. <laughs> the crazy stuff you can find on line. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Just gonna read it. Nitro or nitrile. Oh, different pronunciations. <laughs> nitro or nitrile. <laughs> nitro or nitrile. Okay, so there you go. You people are all wrong. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time for me. <laughs> Natril or nitrile. Adi oh. Adi. And McMahon was mentioned on the way I heard it podcast. Oh, good. See? Okay. So now that I have that all done after that delay. Oh, and we have a real question instead of us okay. goofing around. Does it matter the size, what kind of wire rings and nuts? So you're going to want to have one that matches. So on the, the, the rings... Let me pull those back out. Where did I end up putting those? Here they are. Um, I grabbed the smallest one we could, which are the the uh, 16, the 22, I believe. But you do want to match your wire at some point. Um, so, yeah, 16 to 22 gauge is what we end up going with. Hope Did okay. we freeze, freeze up there? A little bit, but it'll come back, I'm sure, in a minute. Everybody's working from home and the Internet's being used. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, try and, and match them up somewhat if you can, the best you can. I personally like to solder them on if I can, um, just because that is a better way to go, but that's right. it's up to you. So once you know which one you want to have your, your terminal on, you either need to unscrew your screw here and, and put your terminal on and then tighten it up. I'm just going to go ahead and add the extra screw to okay. it because it's going to make it easier for me. And then we'll take the other one. And so the way it's working is our positive is connected and then our negative is split. And so once you, you complete the circuit for your, your negative, it will light up the LED. So I'm just picking two random spots. Right. If you want to, uh, Pull that camera back in at some point. We can. It went offline. Oh, my camera did. Oh, give me one sec here. Okay. While you're doing that, I will mention a couple things um, for uh, next week. Uh, Jesse and I will be doing um, Tuesday uh, Tuesdays with Geocache Talk. There he is. Hey. I'll jump in since he's uh, fixing that camera real quick. Yeah, um, so we're we're gonna have Tuesday another Tuesdays with Geocache Talk, and is this week? I think this week uh, coming up is our uh, night of uh, card game, right? Card game night. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a fun one. Uh, GC World playing a card game. We've done it with patrons before, but we've never done it live on the show. So this should uh, it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um, we're gonna like play everything we try. It's either gonna be a whole lot of fun or a <laughs> spectacular disaster. So yeah. either way, it'll be great. No, it'll be great. Uh, I, I think it'll be great. It'll be fun. We have four four players, and um, we actually have some giveaways. We have one person who's gonna do some giveaways um, f during the show, and mm -hmm. um, but there'll be a play along in the chat room version as well. Yeah, we're we doing prizes and yeah. You know, just like Geocache, there'll be an honor system in the chat room, and you get to kind of see how you stack up against the players on the board. And yeah, I suspect based on our chat room, people will line up against different teams. Yeah, they will select different teams of the four players we have, and uh, we'll see how fun. Jesse will be along. He's not playing, he's gonna be scorekeeper. 
Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. and never play against Gary for money because he designed the game. So, <laughs> and I'm gonna play with my. Oh, we're gonna play with my copy. So that's you know. No, I, I actually anybody could play. Oh yeah, I was gonna mention that too. That's yeah, good. Derek Baker mentioned uh, behind the cash mentioned about next week, next Wednesday. We do have a geocaching with kids mm-hmm. episode. Uh, it'll be coming out podcast. So that'll be I next. Everybody already knows by this point, but it, it's a great show. So oh, un- unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the idea of that one. So that's great. Huge hit. It, it it's a it, it is a it is a huge hit. It's um. You know, several people in the chat room have talked about. I know Chad's stepping away right now, but uh, soldering. But I, I don't know that everybody is really up to speed on that. Mm-hmm. So we may be able to provide that one week. We'll have to talk Chad into it, right? But a yeah. little how to not burn your fingers off when soldering. Yeah, yeah. we could always do a. Um, he's gonna okay. We're gonna do yeah, that. Yeah, computer is doing some kind of update. That's okay. No so problem. I have um, two computers that run that run this. That's fine. We'll do it like that to finish up. All right. It's my computer that normally sits in my van all the time. It's the one that's mounted in my van, and I grab it because I need an extra computer. So probably never gets updates done. Hey, you're you're good. You're good. All right. Um, Back to that, and we'll talk some more here in a minute. So, Chad, back to you. Okay. So we'll go ahead and tighten those screws up where you want them. Um, And then we're going to – what we need to do now is add – a way to complete the circuit. Now, what you can do on this is, you know, depend if you want to have someone bring a tot, you can have them bring uh, a piece of wire. What I always find, especially for something kind of odd like that, I just supply one. So in our build, I had you put in there, uh, I think I put 16 gauge wire in there. Um, what I, I have a whole bunch of wire, but I went to the auto parts store and, and purchased this. Okay. Um, you really only need, I think I put three feet, but um, you don't even need that much um, of it. So let me just open this up here. And well, if, you, if you're looking at just buying wire, you, you can go online and buy uh, a silicone wire, uh, which is even more flexible and probably a little bit more durable in the weather. But this is just an a easy, and I, I always recommend stranded because stranded is flexible versus a solid wire. Uh, so, um, yeah, so again, that's kind of an item that you pretty much all can always find at a, any kind of auto parts store. So auto parts store, um, home Depot, it's a little bit harder to find the stranded 16 gauge wire. You'll yeah. find, you'll find the, uh, solid because they use We use that for thermostats or, you know, HVAC unit, stuff like that or doorbells, but, um, you won't find the stranded very easy, so you'll find the solid there. Um, so let's see here. So what I'm going to do is just cut off however many inches I want, a couple couple feet, whatever. Yeah. Um, you can you can actually at the end of the build you can uh, your uh, you can cut it down if you want to. <clears throat> so. so you- so you'll leave that out there for people to use then. Yes. Okay. So what we're going to end up doing is drilling a hole right here that okay. we're going to feed the wire through. Um, and uh, take the nine volt off for now until we glue it in. Um, we'll drill a hole there. We'll feed the wire through it and then we'll tie a knot on the end. And then that's what you'll use. We'll strip the ends of the wire and that's what you'll use. Oh, good. That way it doesn't disappear. <laughs> right. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you just got to make sure you silicone the back of it when you're done the best you can. Okay. So um, change drill bits back to the 316s. There it is underneath everything. This is the problem with workstations is they get so full. Sure. Of stuff. So wherever you want. Now I'm going to put it here on the side of the box. You can put it wherever you want, but I think to me that is the smartest place to put it. Um, it's not going to have any water 
sitting down and on it, right? It actually kept absorbing through the side, depending on how the cache is sitting. So, right. Um, we're just going to drill a hole here. And hopefully, I didn't drill through my wire that I had in there. <laughs> <laughs> but, like you said, it's a good spot to. Good spot to put it. Again, you don't want to put it too far down, like you said, because people are going to have to use it, uh, or you're going to have to. I mean, you don't want to put a lot of extra wire unless you don't have to. So yeah. So then I'm just going to feed the back of it in there, and you can make the hole smaller if you want to. Um, I probably could have went a little bit smaller, and then I'm just going to tie a knot on the back side of it here. Yeah, uh, Wheels AZ mentioned about fastening the wire through the handle so you don't create another possible leak spot. Is that something else you could, you could do? That too. Yeah, I mean that's that's a good idea. That's a great suggestion. Um, and then if you have a little loop here, you could actually put it around one of the these the screws there and actually put another uh, screw on it so then it can't go anywhere. Oh yeah, um, yeah. but. If you take it off of there with that knot in there, you can't pull it through at all anyway. Sure. So, but that's, it's up to you. It's, I mean, it's your cash. You do what you want. This is just a suggestion. And, and I like, actually, I really enjoy hearing comments and what people's suggestions are because um, it's great ideas and something that obviously I didn't think about. Yeah. Well, it's good for the show. Yeah. So we'll strip the wires here. Now, you what I, I have done in the past is put some connectors on the ends of these, some wire connectors, just to so it didn't look so incomplete. Oh, right, because it's definitely even bare wire. Right. Um, the issue is <laughs> every week I'd go out to maintenance it because someone would pull it off. So I used <laughs> to put these ends on, right, so it kind of looked completed. Yeah. Um, so, but what I have found is if you just leave bare wire there, that lasts the longest. Wow. Um, okay. It's, it's amazing then that how many people will actually destroy the the nuts or the connectors off the ends of the wires. Or they pull them too hard or something. I yeah. Don't know. Interesting. So if you have a solder gun, you could solder these ends so they're solid. And then you wouldn't have any issues with it at all. Right. Um, so it's, it's completely up to you um, what you want to do. But now that you have this hole here, you definitely are going to want to seal it with something. Um, and I would recommend some kind of silicone just so it will last longer, expand and contract the silicone will. So now that you have this, we need to put the battery back in. What we can do here. A bigger workstation. <laughs> yep. I'm going to go ahead and glue this battery in. Now you can use Velcro. You can use double-sided tape. Um, I'm just going to use this for tonight. Um, and I can show you some other holders that you could use. Now, one thing when you're looking at, someone mentioned a hot glue gun. One thing that I like about this one is you have the settings for high and low. And so I use a, most of my stuff on low, and that way it actually takes a lot longer to dry. Okay. Um, so you can actually right. move along. So it's up to you. Now, if I was trying to fill something with hot glue, then I'd switch to high because I need that the heat. Right. I need to be able to actually be runny. Gotcha. So, um, and then you could take and glue down if you wanted to some of this stuff. It, it's completely up to you. Uh, what you want to do. So once that's in, we just have to, now in order to complete the puzzle, um, you just have to add your numbers that you want. And then you'll have to, the easiest way is honestly on these is to hold one here and then just run these up and down. It's kind of hard with that on the sled. So that's not it. I don't, I don't remember which one it is. <laughs> you do what a casher would do. Oh, there oh, there, there, it's one of those. Oh, there. There it is. So there it is. So it lights up and you know that those are the two numbers that you need. And then you can do whatever kind of puzzle you want with those. Right. So that Very is cool. pretty much it. You just need to add whatever numbers you want. Uh, again, you can do, 
<clears throat> something that's a label maker one, uh, like I did here, where you just find the two numbers here, and then that will give you the lock code. But uh, I'll leave that up to you. You can use Sharpie, you know, paint pen, whatever you want. Yeah. Um, one thing I've noticed, and I know, uh, uh, Jesse, I, I, I'm, I think you've probably done as well, is I've, I use this, uh, I don't know, in chat, I don't know if you've used this as well. Um, I like using Sharpies that are the, uh, they mention them as far as being permanent or uh, what do they call them. Uh, to find the right one. But um, some of the Sharpies will say that they're like more permanent than others. They're like designed to be. I use these retractable fine tip ones. Okay. It just says permanent marker, but I don't, I don't know. Are you happy with that? I'm happy with it. And the nice thing is it's a, it's retractable, right? So I'm not always taking a lid on and off. Um, oh yeah. So you just have to, it's just like a regular pen. Okay. I'll have to find the one I'm mentioning because I've used them before, but maybe I was maybe it's just overkill. Maybe somebody can can also comment on that. But never overkill. Never overkill. <laughs> hey, it's, it's, you know, probably you're probably you're probably right. I probably probably was smart to use the. I can find the right one. So one thing here, real quick, while Gary's finding that is. Something I made here that is the okay. exact same puzzle we just made. Oh, did you find it? Oh, as I say, uh, um, uh, Wheels mentioned about paint pens. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, paint pens. I actually have um, some right here. They work extremely well. Um, these This happens to be a black one, but it's a fine line paint pen. And here's white ones. Cool. And they work, they work very well. Okay, cool. Keep going. So. You're good. And anything you want to do, the, the white paint pen would, he's right, would show up really well on, on the top of the container. So uh, another one I made here, and actually I got this idea um, kind of from um, a cashier last, uh, last build, what he made, um, but I made it with this. So you'd have two puzzles. So if you took the container from last month to where they'd have to get into it one puzzle, and then they opened it up, this actually would fit on the inside of it. <laughs> There'd be two puzzles. Now to get to the log, you have to figure out, you have to complete the circuit here, which would then give you the code to get in to it. And then the log would be inside there. And then you just have room for some swag or whatever. Yeah. So just a, a thought. I mean, if you want to kind of change it up, make it a little more interesting. Most of my caches are two steps. So you have to have a step to get in and then a step to get to the log. Show the couple that if you would, Chad, real quick, show that again in different oh. sides of it, just to give people a, a real good uh, picture of. Yeah, so it's just uh, a uh, outlet box, a single gang um, outlet box right um, here. And what I did, and I didn't glue it together, because these are just extra parts I've laying around, um, is this then you go to, these are two pieces of three quarter inch uh Three quarter or one inch PVC, yeah, PVC, and then three quarter uh, elbows, and then just a small chunk of this. Now you'd glue it together if you put it in the cache. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then a three quarter <laughs> inch with a, and then I just drill the hole through it and put a lock on it. So um, it's actually pretty simple. Yeah, the lock would be the most expensive part of this whole thing. The nice thing about that though is by putting that directly through there, you take care of. Still two birds with one stone. It's it's blocked, so you can't get you can't open the can't get the bison tube out. Correct. Until you get it all done. So it's kind of yes, nice multi step in one. Yeah, and then that just has a wire through it again. Um, and I think I have a knot on it somewhere. Maybe not. I guess I didn't put a knot on it. Um, but same thing. Then it will fit inside your ammo can. You could have two stage. Um, you could do. Same theory as, as that of the last one with a lock through it. Um, you could do either build on it, the LED decryptor or, or what we just did. Uh, and then once you get it off, um, I like this one. It's a little bit bigger. It'd be good for um, urban hides. But uh, I like the bigger part of it because um, you then you can carry the big log works. Yeah, the log work one. Container there, yeah. Those so. are awesome. 
April was wondering where you like to do you buy locks at Home Depot or where do you prefer? Yeah, I usually buy them at Home Depot. Um, these ones here, I buy a lot of them in a pack of four at Home Depot. They're not cheap. I think a pack of four is like 39 or 42 bucks or something like that. Um, but I don't go through them too much. They're good outdoor locks that are programmable. Um, I prefer the ones that have the key in it um, versus the ones that don't. There, some, just the shackle, you just have to push. They'll have a number on it, which yeah. I can show you. I have, I have lots of locks. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one for probably a show even sometime is just because I know that you're trying to make them muggle proof. So do you think those are? So there's this, yeah. I mean, they're they're pretty much muggle proof. What I what I find is, um, this wasn't set on zero, so I wonder if I have a code in there already. There we go. What I find is, so these don't have the key in it to set the to program the lock. Yeah. So on this one, if you look at the top, you just have the one and two on it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so all you do is you take the shack, you push it down to one, flip it over to two, and then whatever you change the code at is what yeah. it is. Well, if a cashier accidentally does that when they're finding the cache, it changes the code and then no one can get into it. Yeah. Including oh, me. Right. So then I have to cut it off. So I prefer the one with the key, but you know, I mean, it's completely totally up to you. Yeah. It's nice to not have the ones that can either accidentally or deliberately changed. Yeah. So, and then another way, another thing you could do with this is you could make it, like I said before, you can make it a multi. So one of the waypoints or anything you want, um, you can take this. And so I just happened to grab whatever was in my drawer. So one of these electrical boxes, again, this is a double gang electrical box. Um, and then I put the nor the coordinates for the north and the west, and then you got to figure out the end ones. So whatever lines up, whatever gets that light. Right. Um, oh, like I said, I had to connect the other side. That's okay. That gives you the two coordinates then, or the yeah. So then that will just give you the two coordinates. Two, the right, the ending of the coordinates. I like that. So that would give you the ending of the coordinates, and you could do that anyway. You could add, you know, more coordinates. You could do the north forty-seven and have the rest down there. You know, whatever, whatever you want to do. You know, yep. again, that's just some thoughts that I had. So I made it up real quick to show people um, different ideas, um, and that I I got that idea just because I've actually done a cache that had that. So right. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I don't know if you want me to show you those other battery holders real quick. Yeah. And then. Yeah, and then we'll we'll start to wrap up for tonight. Yeah. So there's there's different types. So this is a nine volt battery holder that you can actually screw glue in there, uh, and then the battery, the nine volt will just stick right in there, and click in. Or you have this watertight one here that you actually have to unscrew uh, to get the battery in and out. And then, it, but I don't like the on and off feature on. I'd probably glue that shut, you know, glue it so it was permanently on, because I could see a cashier flipping it off, and then whoever yeah. comes to find it next can't get the cat, you know, can't get it to light up. But anyways, just a couple options you can do with that. But for today, I just did a a really quick, easy, yeah, connector. Good. Flip your camera around real quick, and we'll we'll start to wrap up. Jesse, if you want to come back, you can. Hey, I'm back. <laughs> What'd you think? What were your thoughts? You were you were manning the the chat tonight. What are, what are I like it. Uh, people were very interested. I think a lot of people are watching, and some people have the uh, have the parts, but they're watching, and they're going to go back and be able to play it back and build it slower. Um, you know, not that you were going too fast or anything, but I think people are liking to watch and they're slowly building as, as they go afterwards because you can keep rewinding, right? It's on YouTube. So parts list is out there. Tools are out there. The videos are out there. So all you have to do is just keep backing up and going again. And mm -hmm. I think uh, what I really like about this is you're showing how to build the gadget part of it, but it's really adaptable to what anybody wants. And people are making different versions of this. It's not there's not only one way to do it, right? They can do an ammo can, they can do, you know, put in an electrical box. They can, they can put in a lot of different things and really come up with a lot of ideas. You're showing the fundamentals and then they can adapt it how they want from there. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, another part to that too, is to remind people this fits almost any type of cash. So 
you want to do a where I go, which I can't believe I'm saying, if you want to do a multi -track, Obviously, that's what everybody wants to do. <laughs> but you could do anything that needs a physical container at the end of end of whatever. Um, you could. Uh, <laughs> Audi's saying he wants to play with the missile launcher lie detector thing, but but no, I, I think that's the important thing about these builds is like you said. You can even build part of it tonight and build the rest later. Um, yeah, Eric mentioned, now I see how it works. Next step, figure out. Yeah. So, it's yeah, if you want to start it during one of our shows and finish later on, uh, or if you just want to build it all later, whatever, however you want to do it, it's, it's awesome. Well, and you could stack several of these episodes together, right? Like use last month, this month, whatever we do next month. Mm -hmm. And make those all into one cache or, you know, elements into one container or separate containers, separate stages. You could do a lot with. Yeah. It's pretty much up to whatever they can think up. Chad's given them the fundamentals and then they can go from there. So, yeah, it's perfect. Chad, another great show, man. I love it. Great. Yeah, it's fun. I, I really enjoy uh, these shows and, and I love the live feedback that we're getting from people and questions. So absolutely. And I believe from the ones that we've been able to track so far, when people let us know that they built these based on this, I try to put them on a watch list and uh, the logs that are coming in are really good. So I think, you know, it's like the, the second phase of this. So people are getting to put out something good and then other people are getting to enjoy something good. So, so that's good. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've added those to the watch list as well. The ones that were published from last month. And I enjoy reading logs as a cash owner, you know, and uh, they're, they're fun to read. So I've enjoyed it. And I think we sold everybody on Harbor Freight tonight. So. <laughs> I need to contact them and say, hey. That's right. We got a show and we'd like to have you as a spot. <laughs> but no, we're happy with we're happy with log work. They've been they're they're a tremendous sponsor, by the way. I just wanted to re-mention them. Uh thank you so much, Yvonne and crew. Uh log work is tremendous. So what Go ahead, Jesse. You had a comment. I wasn't. I no, know. that uh, somebody said they're going to Harbor Freight, and the next person said, "Keep your money in your car." So <laughs> there's well, that's a real controversial. About it. Download the app because you get that uh, twenty percent off on the app. Oh, they're oh, always right. giving away coupons and free stuff, yeah. and yeah, it's 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 the perfect store for projects like this. Yeah. Cool. I think that will be it for tonight. We'll see everybody. If you want to come to the, the Tuesdays with Geocache Talk we're doing, uh, that'll be next Tuesday. But in two weeks, uh, we're going to have on uh, DJ, w, DJ W House. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Dave Wagner will be on uh, in two weeks. So it'll yeah, be a great uh, Don't forget, uh, I'll put that up real fast. Uh, the promo code Geocache for the Right in the Rain. Yeah, tonight's the last... Tonight's the last night, but yeah, looking forward to having Dave on. I think that'll be neat to uh, to hear. Dave Dave builds incredible incredible gadget caches as well. He's part of the the great crew. So yeah, yeah. that's They're another disable his based on disabled him. But but you know what? This is a perfect time to build a bunch of these and think about where you're going to place them and, and come up with the most creative cache you can because. You have time because most a lot of places are not publishing caches right now, right? So you right. Have yeah. Time to come up with not just the container is awesome, but the whole experience. Yeah, people are mentioning about how they're you really are, you can put one out, but you're not going to get it published for a while. But yeah, I think we have five or six published today here. I oh, was really? surprised to see how many is coming through, and we're supposed to be in lockdown here, but yeah, yeah. And yeah. I get a lot of logs on my caches too. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So all right. We'll see everybody next time. See you Sunday if you want to come to the show then. Uh, we are going to be talking with Sodak, Zach, about and Jesse, too, for the most part, because I'm, I'm going to be the learner. I'm just going to be listening. But uh, how do you properly put a cache in a tree on, a, on a, uh, the top of a uh, railroad trestle, whatever crazy thing you're thinking? There's a proper way to do it and an improper way to do it we're going to talk about how to do it correctly the proper way so no, that no is problem. sunday so thanks everybody zach who wow he had yeah. been for a while though it, you know he's been he's got life going on got a rough crowd and zach <laughs> that'll be fun having zach on oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. so all right i think that's it
We're going to say good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.